12 Kent Street, on the corner of Kent and Grieve. Rented for a little while until we bought it, and then we lift, had it lifted. And from then on, we were doing things to it. You know, it was continual. Um, no, we did it a little bit by little bit, you know, and that's what sort of, um, as we could afford to do it, we did it. And, um, the best of bricks all around. We made all those before we sort of put them up. So that was why it was so hard to leave. It wasn't just a house that we bought and lived in. It was we sort of did all the renovations, little bit by little bit ourselves. And people probably thought, well, they did say, oh, but you're so much better off here. And I have to, I know that, and I knew it then that I, this was going to be so much easier for me. Um, but that didn't help the memories that you have of a home, which you gather over the years. And now the family's gone. My husband, he was um, uh, he was in a, injured in an accident at his work and died um, when I was 49. That, you know, and he was 52, that happened. You just can't build more memories because they're gone now. The boys have gone away from here and that, so I just felt that this didn't have that feeling. Yeah, silly perhaps, but that's how I felt. Uh, we had three, three through it um, before we had it lifted. Because um, I think when we bought it, that was one of the conditions we had to lift it. It's vast. Well, you saw how high it came. You know, you can't imagine when you look at it there, you know. Um, maybe you just packed up and, and my husband was in the water brigade, so he used to go then when we packed up to shift people. They used to do that in the water brigade boats. Yeah, and uh, it used to come up those houses in Kent Street the next block down, there's a it was a sort of like a, a low area there. That's where it used to sort of come in and fill up from around. Uh, the paddock cross in front of me was all water. Um, and it used to come under the Kens. The, the house behind in Greaves Street on the corner, or well, the little patch of dirt next to the post on the corner there, that's where we used to put or oh, was our mower or something, because that was the only bit of high ground there. It was all sort of water under the houses there. It used not go up where the purposes were. I don't think the water went up under there, because that's quite high. But Kenny certainly got it. Places look high, you think they'd be right, but they're not, and vice versa, you know, so, yeah. I think the time waiting for it to come up, if it'll come in, is the worst time. Because you don't know whether you've got to sort of do things and that. Um, but once you know you've got to pack up, you just do. And in those days, we had good um, people telling us where, when, and where, when it was so high at Copperhurst, we knew it had come in so much here and so forth, which you don't get now. Well, it was people that knew the area and gave us, you know, you could rely on their information. Uh, and you just packed up, put up in the loft what you could put up top and did the best you can. And then, and then I used to move up to the back of the people at the back, their house wasn't, didn't get water, got under it, but not in there. And then when it went down, you cleaned the mess up and got on. I mean, in those days, I didn't have the stuff. <laughs> that I ended up with now, you know, we were pretty basic. You know, things that we could move. But furniture wise, you didn't have a lot, you just had basic things. Plus, no, I think you just got in it and you knew it was coming, you just got in and did it. Mud. And in, in, in one uh, time, my husband didn't get back. You have to do it as it went down keep it going, and he was didn't get back from his duties, and it dried. I don't think I probably ever got it really 
you know, it, once it dries on and, and the house itself was a lot of little, you know, uh, architraves and skirting boards and so forth. And the cupboards, you never lost the smell out of them. Every time it rained, get wet, you'd smell the flood, no matter how much you uh, cleaned. I never thought it would happen. They used to say, you know, well, another bridge again. And I, and, and I was born the year that this one was opened. I never thought that I'd ever be here for the next one, if ever there was one. So, um, no, I, I don't think I ever had that feeling of, you're know, lucky you don't have to move. You said, that's, that's life, if that's what's there, you've got to do it. I wasn't happy about it. Um, but I used to go to those seminars or whatever they had, and I could see that they, were, they knew what they were going to do before they, I'm sure they had those, really. They, they have some idea before they start. I so I didn't think it was much good protesting about it. You just sort of, yeah, get on with it. It was a four bedroom house and um, separate dining room, TV room. So it was a big house to, big verandas on it. So, um, we had a couple of provide sales, thinking we could do this stuff. Um, I'm really not a hoarder, I didn't think I was. You know, I'm not basically a hoarder, but there was a lot of... It was a big, big job, and I think it probably took me 12 months to get over, to, to get over it. Um, because I was, was only three when I did that, so, you know, that was not a good idea. If you're going to move, do it before you're 83. I bought some things, but I, not a lot because I really didn't. You, you know, by the time we pack up, you're packing up and sort of doing things, I really didn't. And then you've got to bring them here and unpack. You don't have time to sort of be putting... And there was no garden here. There was those, those beds were there, but there was nothing in them. And the, so, you know, it was you had to find somewhere to put your, what you bought. It just wasn't possible to bring too much. Bought some of my pot plants, they survived. But, um, yeah, but I guess that was getting too much for me too. Anyway, now the big garden that I had, I wouldn't have been able to sort of do it. So. It was it was just hard. The whole thing was so difficult. Even the packing up and the garage, and the whole thing was it, it was not done at the right time of my life. I don't think that's probably basically. More to be the um, Empty, I think. Probably an empty feeling. Yeah. And as much as I knew this was a good place, I really felt that I wasn't sort of, didn't take to it as quickly as I should have, perhaps. And I love my garden. I've always loved my garden. And that over there was my. Um, that saved my day, many a day, you know, if I could get out into the garden and garden and see the people going past. So that was a big, that was hard leaving that. And now the house is gone. I'm so pleased that's gone because they used to keep saying to me that when the garden was left go, when we left the house, it had to be all um, left clean and lawns mowed and all this, you know, done. And then they put, people in there that never even mowed the lawn, people say, no, don't go near your place, don't go past your place, because the garden was my saviour on many days, many times. The swing thing out there, I had that on my front, that was my, that front band was my favourite spot, because it was a lovely big veranda and um, I spent a lot of time there. Um, and yeah, I had little patio out porch out the back at the side that we had our barbecue on and that was much we used that an awful lot we had around the side between that two houses I had a I at one stage had about 12 those big palms around the place you know and around there it was like a rainforest area and that was lovely yeah, we had our barbecue down there 
we built an old barbecue down there, that originally was. Lots of spaces that, yeah, I, it was a very comfortable home. It was a homely home. There are probably got a lot of photos of the, that park over there and the trains and what went on around. But it was a nice corner there, you know, there was uh, uh, that park that was opposite me there. When we first went there, it had, it was covered in weeds and covered six foot high. Um, and Rotary cleaned that up and sort of made it a park. But that was just a wilderness there when we first went there. So that's uh, cleaned. Um, yeah, it, uh, I just love living there. That's, yeah, I was very comfortable there. And, I love the home. Yeah. You, you go past it and you just think of all those years you spent doing things and, and it's a big heap of rubble in the backyard. My doctor used to, he walks, he used to walk past there and he said, uh, he walked past in the morning it was there and in the afternoon there was nothing. And I said, yes, that's how it, yeah. Yes. But I am very happy here with this now. I mean, it's a nice, quiet little street. Uh, and it's certainly easier to clean and look after, so. And, and I, if I was buying a house, I'd go for that sort of place rather than this. But knowing full well that this, is, I could do it better than I've got now at the stage I am in life with my problems I've got so I guess that's something to look back because I probably would have been in trouble over there with that one uh, as time goes on. So it might have caught up with you? Yeah I think so yeah. and that's what I'm that's what I'm telling myself I'm pretty lucky so yeah.